Hello everyone, welcome to Seek and Destroy, and in this episode we're going to do a double feature review because this week I watched two black and white werewolf movies, uh, one of them that is the indiest of indie filmmaking from our friend Blacktastic Media who sent me an early screener copy of his movie What Have I Done, which will come out October 27th, so I will put a link to his channel down below so you can go there and subscribe and be ready for when he drops that film at the end of the month, so be sure to check it out and support indie filmmakers. And then of course the other film we're going to talk about tonight is Werewolf by Night from Marvel, which is a werewolf movie that's in black and white with a big budget. This is going to be really fun because I reached out to Tajaya, who's the filmmaker of What Have I Done? I said, hey man, I just watched Werewolf by Night and I just rewatched your movie. What would you say if I did a double feature? Maybe it'll get more eyes on the video. Maybe it'll get more eyes on your movie too um, if we kind of combine it and I do a double feature review. I said, are you cool with that? And he said, absolutely, man. He said, thanks for doing that. That's good thinking. So here we are. So hopefully this works. So please, please go check out Tajaya's film, uh, Blacktastic Media. I'll put a link to his channel down below. Go there and subscribe. First up, what have I done? Okay, so Tajaya has made some really interesting uh, indie films. And if you are a fan of his channel, if you've been there before, you know, because I've talked about him for a while, I've had him even on the Parasite podcast, I'll put a link down below so you can kind of hear from his own words what his inspirations are, what motivates him, because I think you have to understand who he is and what his channel is all about to really get immersed a little bit more into the world that he creates with what have I done. Um, I will say that in my opinion, this is, you know, cause I'm, I'm a very tough critic and I'm gonna be a tough critic today too on his film. Um, but again, all of my criticisms are personal choices, um, things that, that I personally like and stuff. So it's not meant to offend. And he knows that obviously we respect each other tremendously. And as artists, you know, we respect each other and we like to give feedback. And he is always on my channel commenting, uh, very positive, but it doesn't hold back if he disagrees with me on something. And that's what I like about him. He's very real with me. And that's what I'm gonna do today and be real with all of you as well as I talk about his film. Um, but I do see a progress in my opinion of my personal tastes. Uh, you know, there was feedback I gave him that was constructive on Sarah, which was his last movie, and that, you know, which came out last year. So he's pumping these movies out and he's working really, really hard and he's getting a really great crew and, you know, great people to be in them. And I gotta commend him. I mean, the hardest thing in the world, as you know from me, trying to finish Neverland, just finishing something is mind-numbing and challenging. And it's very hard sometimes to get something that you love so much out there to the world. And he's now released three films every year around Halloween in a row. <laughs> so, you know, during the pandemics, uh, he's been releasing stuff. So hats off to you, Tajaya. You're amazing, dude. And, uh, and I hope you continue to do this and continue to make movies every year, if you can, you know, if you're able to. Um, and next time you do like a Kickstarter and stuff, I'll be sure to share it more and, and get more eyes on it as well, if I can. Uh, so his film is about a detective who is also a werewolf. That premise alone, I really liked. Um, there is a, uh, you know, but it's also like a blend of his channel. Like I said, if you go to Tajaya's channel at Blacktastic Media, he does poetry, he does documentaries, he shoots a lot of his stuff in black and white, and all of that is here in this. This feels like an amalgam of all the things he creates passionately on his YouTube channel. A lot of the scenes actually in the movie don't have two people talking to each other directly. It has voiceover and it has, you know, and there's rhyming and poetry to it uh, when the main character is narrating. And as I'm watching this, I'm like, man, this is literally like a love letter to his own channel. It's like all of his passions in one thing mixed in with like a horror vibe. So for that, I really appreciated this movie on that level because he basically looked at his what he's been creating for the past few years on YouTube and goes, okay, let's pull some of this, let's pull some of this, and let's blend it into this werewolf story. And it makes it very unique. It really is very different. Um, some things different in a good way, in my opinion, and some things I'm like, eh, I don't know if I personally would have done that choice, but again, we're not really supposed to say what we should do or what we would want to do in a movie, but I do have some notes of just what he presented in this film. And I don't want to get into spoilers because I want you guys to watch it, but it's, it does build tension. It kind of has like this, almost like this Jaws thing where they, they hint at the werewolf a lot. And then you finally see it, you know, closer to the end, which is funny because Werewolf by Night does that as well. And what I like is the, do the documentary that uh, Tajaya put out there on his channel. He talks about how 
there's the Wolfman, and then there's like a creature. There's like Underworld, you know, where there's lichens, um, which is awesome because I, I was thinking about that when I was watching this because Tajaya, he's shaved head, big dude. And I was like, you know, he he kind of has that, and he's got a deep voice. He kind of reminds me of Kevin Grevo or Grevu, uh, who is the the writer, co-writer, and one of the actors in Underworld, and uh, and got you know turned into a werewolf. Uh, so I was like, kind of getting those kind of vibes. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool because I like that first Underworld movie a lot. Um, so when I was watching this, I was I kept you know getting glimpses of his YouTube channel, and I'm like, that's what this is. This is him just pulling it all together. And so you have this story where there's a detective and he's, you know, trying to solve this murder. Turns out he's the werewolf that's causing the murders. And then he, you know, gets in touch with his father and he's trying to figure out his background and his, you know, where he comes from. And there's some cool twists and turns. So all that and some of the cinematography, and I know he had someone helping him with uh, shooting, doing some reshoots. I actually have a theory. There's a shot of uh, Tajaya's leg, like tapping, like nervously when he's on the phone. And I was wondering if that was actually his leg or if that was like a pickup shot. So Tajaya, let me know if you if you feel like giving away that secret or whatever. Uh, Cause I was like, I wonder, is that his leg or is that someone else's leg? Not that it matters, but it was just like, I know he had, there was, you know, there's obstacles when you're making these movies and there's the scheduling issues and stuff. And some days you're like, hey, we shot it on this day, but it, the camera shook or it didn't look right. So could you do a pickup shot of someone else's leg? You know, like that's filmmaking and that happens in every movie. So I was just like those little things that I, you know, because I've watched this three times, actually. I, to, so for those of you out there who I really dissected this movie and I was going through it. But again, I don't want to get into deep spoilers here. But having this character go on this journey and tell it through kind of like a poetry narration and it's shooting it in black and white and stuff and, and kind of hiding some of the, you know, the visuals until you're ready to show them. I thought all that was really great. It's very uh, smart filmmaking, you know, especially when you have a very small budget. And I got, and you know, those are all the positives, but for, if I want to be constructive, I got to say, um, in the past, I think I said with Sarah, you know, I said his film on that, he would do these long shots where they just kind of go on or the, the opening credits go on too long for my tastes. And, uh, and again, these are all just my personal opinions, but I kind of felt like that in here. I mean, it's like, it gets to four minutes before someone actually talks or narrates and for me, I'm like, I always think as an editor, I, I want to chop things down. You know, like I would probably take this, you know, 50 minute movie and and crush it down to like 25 or 30 minutes. Um, that's just how my brain works. So I'm always a condenser and uh, and other people always think like expansion and I kind of think c c condension. Uh, so when I was watching this, I was like, okay, that I feel like that goes on a little too long or it's, you know, we're nine minutes in and I just found out he's like a cop. That feels like a long time to, to get a, a good piece of information like that because I feel like the foundation of the root of this story of a cop trying to solve a murder and finding out he's the murderer, I kind of like that. It reminded me a little bit of Fallen with Denzel Washington uh, where it's him after a demon and there's like some cool twists with that. So um, so yeah, if you have never seen that movie, check that out too. But uh, please, you know, um, go check out What Have I Done? Uh, when it comes out on October 27th, I'll, again, I'll put a link to, to Jaya's channel down below, Blacktastic Media. Go check out, subscribe to him, and be ready for this film when it drops. Um, but those were my major criticisms. It was just like trimming stuff. and But like cinematography, I thought this improved on Sarah. I thought there was a nice progression there. Um, some of the pacing of it, I was like, okay, this is this actually built some tension, which I liked. Um, that He used, uh, you know, some... There was like drone shots and a couple other things and i think there was some stock footage but it was all used kind of well and then they did black and white and kind of like sin city there's like a little bit of red in it and it's so funny because that's kind of what werewolf by night has too so we'll talk about that in a minute but my final thoughts on this was overall i think this is a in my opinion i can see tajaya growing as a filmmaker and a storyteller and so for that i i commend them and again for getting another movie done and in, in in a year like it's massively impressive and everyone who helped you and worked on this you all you know pat yourselves on the back you guys did a great job um but for me i at the end of this i would probably still give this like a two and a half to three because i found myself especially on the second and third viewing editing a lot like i was like oh, I, I think i would do this i would do this and when my brain goes to that level i i feel like that that kind of puts me more in the middle where it's like, okay, I like these things and these are great and these are strong. So I want to get to them faster. I want to, I want this to just be strong, 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 strong. 
But again, that would change fundamentally the entire story of this. So maybe my decisions would be wrong because there is some really good tension being built here in this film. And my editing would, you would lose that probably. Um, I would probably have some of it on some level, but I, I would, you know, with my, well, the way my brain works and the way I would crush this story together, I think I would change it drastically. And, and that's, uh, that's not, that's not a good thing on some level, I, I, you know, coming in and chopping it up that much. So, um, you know, everything in this is intentional. It's, it's meant to be there the way it is. And that's why it's, uh, you know, it's a work of art. And, uh, and I, you know, say to Jaya, great job on it, man. And, uh, I, but still overall, there's some things to it that just weren't to my liking that, uh, like there's no, there's not a lot of humor in it, you know, and it's not that, you know, there should be humor, but I like levity in my horror. I like things to break stuff up sometimes, you know, uh, Fallen had a little bit of that with Denzel Washington. There's a few scenes where you kind of chuckle and you kind of, you know, take, take a breath, you know, which is nice, or there's a nice heartfelt moment and stuff. And this just felt like, you know, kind of dour and poetic the whole way through. So it kind of kept one tone, which is great for consistency. But for me, it also just kind of was like, Ah oh, man, I would like some variety in the approach to things. Like I would have liked to see a scene where he maybe laughed at the absurdity of finding out that he's a werewolf. You know, things like that that kind of help you get pulled into the world a little bit uh, more. I think those are things I look for in stories. So because it didn't have that, that's why I'm leaning towards a two and a half to three. But the, again, those are my personal opinions, and that's my final rating for it. But I want to hear what your final ratings are. So please, when this movie comes out. Go check it out and comment on his video what you thought of the film. Give him feedback, you know, give him if you want to be constructive, if you want to be positive, like whatever you feel, you know, tell it to him. He's an awesome dude and he's he deserves our respect because he's a hardworking guy and he makes, you know, he makes movies. It's like I, I'm still struggling on Neverland at times. And I then he comes up and he's like, I got another movie coming out this year. I'm like this guy is amazing. <laughs> like, it's just, it's amazing. So, uh, you know, Tajaya, no matter what my criticisms are, they shouldn't take away anything from you because you're an awesome dude. And I appreciate you sending me this copy early so I could check it out and bring my thoughts to everybody on the channel. All right. And last but not least in our double feature review, we have Werewolf by Night. And this is by Marvel. And this, I gotta say, when, you know, when I heard it was going to be made, I kind of was like, eh, I don't know, it's, you know, it's going to be a 50 minute special, which is just so funny, the parallels, you know, Tajaya releases his film coming up soon on the 27th and then 20 days before, which is today, the 7th, Marvel releases a black and white with some red in it, uh, werewolf story too. And they went the opposite route uh, that Tajaya went. Tajaya went with a creature, like, like a lichen monster creature, werewolf, like where, you know, like American werewolf in London or something. Um, whereas you know, the werewolf by night goes with a, a wolf man, kind of like a teen wolf or something like that. It's some movie from the eighties where you can still see the, the actor, you know, there. And then he's just got like hair growing out here and stuff like that. So it's more wolf man style, um, which is cool too, like universal monsters. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can tell these types of stories. And what I liked is there is such a difference between this big budget Marvel one and then this, you know, indie film that Tajaya made that it was like had poetry in it and had these really interesting angles. And then you had this one that had like um, that was like really slow building, much like Tajaya's film, too, and then reveals the werewolf towards the end and, you know, and kind of has action scenes and stuff um, like big budget action scenes. So they really contrast each other really well. And it was fun watching them back to back. Actually, uh, today I watched for the third time Tajaya's film. And then I watched Werewolf by Night once this morning and then watched it again uh, before recording this so that it was fresh in my head. And I got to say, man, this movie, Werewolf by Night, this is more, this was above my expectations for this movie because the trailer looks great and the way they kind of edited it, kind of grindhouse style a little bit, that's not really in the film, uh, but it is all black and white. And I heard that Michael Giacchino, who directed this, who's a composer and now is like a full-time, he's you know going to get other directing jobs at some point. I hope he does more Marvel Halloween specials. I would love to see him do like a 50-minute Ghost Rider movie or another, a follow-up with Elsa Bloodstone. Whatever it is, I, I would like to see him do more in, in this type of scenario because this is really really neat to add to the marvel universe they start with a picture of the avengers and they say yeah the avengers exist but there's also they're in the light and they're fighting and you know in the light and, and everything but there's the shadows there's the darkness and there are things in the darkness that also fight uh, whether they fight for good or evil but they're in the darkness and that's brings you into the world 
of Werewolf by Night. And the whole movie is black and white until, you know, later on. And there's like some cool things. I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but Laura Donnelly as Elsa Bloodstone, she was amazing. I really, really dug her. Um, I love man thing they totally marveled him like marvel movied him where he's kind of like a groot where he's very deadly but there's another side to him too uh i think most people who are into like a you know a, a kind of a softer side of a character they're probably going to fall in love with man thing in this uh, i certainly did in fact i now i just call him ted <laughs> and uh i really i just love that contrast again the humor like it, you have this a uh, really over the top world of monsters and, and you know, uh, nexus creatures like man thing and werewolves and stuff. So to bring in some levity to to kind of poke fun out of it, uh, or po poke fun at it at times. Uh, and, you know, I think that's, for me, that's needed, because I like getting into these worlds of supernatural stuff, obviously, I'm a supernatural fan. But that show also knew when to laugh at itself or be self aware, um, or just you know, uh, throw in a few jokes from time to time. And I know that's kind of Marvel and most people don't like that, but I personally like that when I'm writing anything, I, I even never land in, in the most serious scenes. Sometimes I'm like, okay, this scene, I will let be serious because it, it needs to be because of what it means to the characters. But the next scene, maybe I'm, I'll put something in there to give the, the reader like a, a breath, you know, where they can go, Okay, you know, I, this is the, the moment where I can breathe and then something else is going to come up. Uh, I like that kind of pacing personally. And so this show, you know, this movie or whatever we want to call it, special had it. And I really love that, that they had the old like like a nod to the old CBS 80s, 70, late 70s, early 80s specials. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then the way this was shot. I mean, there were some really cool shots in this as well. And, uh, but then there's also some standard stuff, like some of the action scenes, I'm like, yeah, it feels like standard Marvel. It's like, why is a werewolf kind of doing Kung Fu a little bit, uh, you know, like fighting like Captain America style where, you know, he's like, but, but then they had scenes where he's just clawing people and chewing ears off like Mike Tyson. And I'm like, okay, that stuff I like a lot. And it, it definitely did. You see necks get broke, throats uh, cut you see a, a sword go into a head uh you see a, a human get burned completely uh, and then thrown into the corpse of another body i mean uh it, it's pretty neat um those guys with the, the the shocking sticks though i don't think they ended up being the time variant agency or whatever from loki i think we all assume they did i know i assume they were because of how they were dressed in the weapons but it, I, if they were, they didn't really say it. I don't feel, I don't think I heard them say that in the, in the movie. So I don't think they were tied to Loki or anything like that. I think they were just added security uh, for this, you know, event because they wanted to wrangle this monster into a maze and have all these hunters go hunt it in, in a way to try to win the, the bloodstone, you know, like this, this ancient relic that can reveal monsters and, and, uh, and, and bring them out. You know, if they, if they hide like a werewolf and he's, you know, doesn't turn until the full moon, you could use the bloodstone to turn him into a werewolf to prove that he's a monster. So there's things like that. So I, I liked it. They, they mentioned that um, Elsa bloodstone was trained by somebody, not her father, but somebody else. And I was wondering about, I was thinking about blade. Cause they had, we had talked about how blade is going to be, there was a rumor that it was set in the past and it was going to be a hundred years leading up to present day. And that's when this takes place is present day, even though it's in black and white, it, it seems like it's taken uh, present day. So I was, especially with some of the technology in there, um, so I was thinking about that. I was like, well, what if Blade, is, he's the one who trained Elsa Bloodstone from her being a young lady up to the beginning of this story. I go, maybe I would like that. Because when I was thinking about that, I was like, I don't know about Blade being an older guy training his replacement. You know, I didn't, I didn't really see that as like a, a positive, you know, for his first movie. Um, but um, yeah, but if you end up training Elsa Bloodstone and then she goes off to be her own hunter and stuff, that could be something and that could also explain why she she has some sympathy for um some of the characters in this again i don't want to spoil it but there's some characters in this that where you're like well you're a hunter you should just want to kill these characters but she has a little bit of empathy for them and i'm wondering well maybe if she was trained by a, a half human half vampire that's where that empathy comes from is maybe not all monsters are evil and she knows that already um that could add a lot to her character so anyway i thought this was fun i i really did it turned out to be even better than i thought i saw that trailer and i got really excited but then i was like ah, i'm gonna temper my expectations because i feel like they're gonna marvel it up on some levels and they do 
but I didn't mind. It was so small at times. I didn't mind it because when it got violent, it got violent. I mean, for a Marvel thing, like I said, you see throats get cut. You see swords in the heads, bodies get burned, um, blood splattering all over the screen. Um, you know, but it's in black and white, but still you get limbs chopped off. You know, <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of stuff An arrow shuts you know, through someone's neck. I mean, there's some fun things in this. And, uh, and I, I liked the balance of, you know, some humor, some Marvel superhero-ness but, and monsters. And I think it's a amazing first step into the su- supernatural side of Marvel, which is what I'm dying for. Like, I, you know, I liked all the, you know, not all of them, but some of the Marvel movies leading up to Endgame and stuff like that. And since then, it's been like hit or miss mostly for me. Um, I liked the beginning of WandaVision because I like black and white and, and kind of what they were doing with it with the old sitcoms. Um, and then I liked Loki and Moon Knight. And, and the rest, I'm just kind of like, Man on although what if was a lot of fun um but this i was like yeah bring more of this i want more werewolves vampires i want ghost riders i want i want these characters more man you know more ted more man thing um bring all this you know i want more of it marvel so uh hopefully this does well hopefully other people like it and i want to hear what you think uh, of this movie it's out now so you can watch it let me know your review down in the comments below and again please you know I'll, my final rating on werewolf by night I would say is a four out of five. You know, there's some things I was critical of, um, but uh, but again, and more of an editing kind of thing. But it's a pretty tight 50 minutes. I got to say, like it, it's paced well. It's slow when it needs to be. It it kind of doesn't really build tension. I feel like Tajaya had a good, you know, has a good eye and, and kind of way of building tension in his film. This one didn't really build tension, but I also don't feel like it was trying to. It was just trying to um, build a little bit of a mystery, throw a couple twists in there and have fun. And I think it delivered on that. So I still give it a four out of five though. It was, it's a blast. And uh, I'm going to probably watch it again after recording this review. So, um, you know, please go check out Tajaya's film, Black Classic Media. Again, I'm going to put a link to that down below and, uh, and, and, you know, subscribe to him and watch his movie when it comes out October 27th. I can't say that enough. Please do. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I want to read them in his comment section. So after you watch his film, you know, tell him what you think, and I'll go over there, I'll give thumbs up, and I'll try to reply to all your comments as well. Because we got to support that guy. He's awesome. He's working hard, and so is his team. So go support indie films. And then while you're at it, you know, until until Tajaya's film comes out, check out Werewolf by Night. And, and let me know what your thoughts on that are down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. We'll see you in the future. Peace.